certainly we have developed these vaccines in record time. The important thing to remember is this. What these vaccines received was what's called an emergency use authorization. So it's not a full licensure, it's an emergency use, and this is a mechanism set up by the federal government in times of medical emergency. As these vaccines were developed, none, and I underline none, of the important safety or regulatory steps were skipped. They went through them, they went through them a lot faster. For the pharmaceutical industry, it was all hands on deck. A lot of work that they normally did got put on the back burner so that everybody could work on COVID vaccines. And for the federal government, all the regulators, rather than saying, thank you for your application, it'll go in the pile with the others and we'll get to it in six months, they were standing at the doorway waiting for that application so that they could review things. But there were no shortcuts. No safety steps were skipped. No regulatory steps were skipped. These vaccines went through the same safety process as every other vaccine, with one exception, and that is instead of having two years of follow-up data, we've got about six months. Determining a vaccine is safe is a continuous process. Where you begin is early studies where you give vaccine to a small number of animals. And then if it's safe in animals, you give it to a small number of people. And then if you see it's safe in people, you give it to a large number of people. The most important way you determine vaccine safety is a double-blinded prospective clinical trial. Once a vaccine is licensed, or in this case, given an emergency use authorization, we continue to follow what's happening in the public. So now, as we've given millions of doses of vaccine, we have safety data in millions of people. Herd immunity actually means that we would have enough natural infection to where all of us develop a natural immunity to where it would not be easily transmissible between people, therefore reducing the prevalence of the virus in the population. The trick here is that COVID is so infectious that somewhere around 70% of people probably need to be immune to block sustained transmission. Now at that point, we want to get to 70%. We've got two ways of getting there. We can get there by natural infection. And let's just say for the sake of argument that right now maybe 15% of Americans have already had COVID. That means we've got to go through what we've been through about four to five more times. Well, that's a million and a half people dying. Or we get herd immunity by vaccinating people. People don't die with vaccination. And so we immunize upwards of 70% of our population and COVID will eventually just sort of disappear off the radar. Vaccines are often given in more than one dose. If you think of the vaccines we received growing up, we received multiple doses. The way you should think about vaccine doses is this. The first dose says to your immune system, pay attention to this. The second dose says to your immune system, remember this and don't forget it. In general, with vaccines, it's okay to go later. You just don't want to give it earlier than the recommended period. So the recommendation now from a variety of government agencies and from the World Health Organization is that it's okay to give doses later, up to six weeks later. Here's the good news there. This vaccine is not alive. In fact, if COVID-19 were a whole car, what we're giving is a license plate. So no, there's absolutely no way you can get COVID-19 from the vaccine. It sure is. We expect people, many people, to have some symptoms of the vaccine. Common side effects include fatigue, tiredness, 
And in some cases, you might have some weakness, soreness of your muscles, and even maybe a low-grade fever. This simply means that your immune system is active. Your immune system is recognizing the vaccine and is doing what it's supposed to do to process what it needs to process to remember that virus should it ever enter your body. Some people may have no, no symptoms whatsoever. What we're seeing clinically is that more side effects or more soreness or weakness seem to be associated with the second dose of the two vaccines that are available right now, which would be expected. But right now, the data are indicating to us that there are no long-term side effects from these vaccines. But we're continuing to look at that. And that's why we encourage people who get vaccinated to go on the website if you experience side effects, report the side effects, because those kinds of reporting of any side effects that you encounter are going to help all of us. If you're vaccinated, what the study showed is that the vaccines prevent severe disease. So if you take the COVID vaccine, it may not prevent you from getting an infection, but it will very likely prevent you from being sick and will almost certainly keep you out of the hospital. Ideally, we would all get the COVID-19 vaccine. Because the supplies are coming out of production in batches, we're going to have to be patient as these batches continue to be distributed throughout the country to states and having those folks sort of in a sequence, if you will, of getting the vaccine. But ultimately, we want everyone to have this vaccine. We feel that based on the data that we have now, that that immunity from having a natural infection may last about three months, four months maybe, but we're not entirely sure. There's other data that suggests that the titers or levels of antibodies that individuals have following a COVID-19 infection may not be as high or as good at protecting you in the future as if you actually are vaccinated. So we wanna make sure that people are protected and just because you had COVID-19 previously does not mean you will be protected in the future. It's a good idea to be on the safe side and make sure you get a COVID-19 vaccine according to the CDC guidelines. There's been a lot of talk in the news recently about these newly emerging mutant, mutant is the word that people use, strains. Perhaps a better word is evolved strains. You may have read, of course, that coronaviruses are originally bat viruses. So these are viruses that evolved to live and copy themselves in bats. And what they're doing now is adjusting themselves to living in humans. The good news is, so far, it looks like the vaccines we have are effective for some of these mutant or more infectious strains. But viruses are always knocking at the door. And so eventually we may see strains that are relatively resistant to the vaccines that we have. The good news is, especially with these mRNA vaccines, we have the ability to make new ones in a big hurry. I have been vaccinated. I would like to make sure that we can have the, the most safety that we can in our community. When I see a patient or I see a colleague, I wanna make sure that I am as safe being around them as I would like them to be around me. I'd like to see our communities get back to work. I'd like to see our students get back to school. I teach at the College of Medicine. I'd love to see my students face to face again. And I think that I also got vaccinated for those that I love, my family. I have parents who are elderly. I wanna make sure that I'm safe to be around them. And again, I wanna do my part to mitigate this pandemic. I was right at the front of the line to get vaccinated for several reasons. First of all, of course, I wanna to show to people my confidence in vaccines. But more important, why did I get vaccinated? To protect myself, to protect my family, my, my wife, my, my mother-in-law that lives with us, to protect my colleagues, 
to protect my patients. I want to get back to restaurants. I want to get back to the life I like. I want to be able to go to football games, basketball games. And I have friends that because of COVID, they are not working. I want to see them get back to work. I want to see our economy get back up and running. And the only way we're going to do that is if all of us, minimum 70%, but if all of us get vaccinated. I sort of see this as a patriotic thing and a thing to do for my community because this is what's going to get America back up and running again.